Hello and welcome to the first episode of a new series on the Basic Waves channel. In this series, we invite carefully selected artists to showcase their talents by writing a track in two hours. For the first episode, we have Dulus. Dulus is a prolific producer whose talents have landed him on labels like Anjuna Deep, Watergate and All Day I Dream. He's also collaborated with Jorge Hevec, Hernan Cataneo, Roy Rosenfeld and many, many more. And before we get started, let's hear a preview of what he made today. Now I'm going to hand it over to Deleuze to begin producing. Hello, hello guys. Uh, my name is Julian and you might know my musical project as um, Dulus. I make organic house and progressive house. I've been releasing on a few labels such as Anjuna, Anjuna Beats, um, Watergate. I have a release on All Day I Dream. I have some other big upcoming releases on some pretty cool labels. So um, I'm happy with the results so far of this project and uh, today I'm going to be writing a track from scratch. I want to say thanks to uh, Julian aka Bound to Divide for letting me uh, showcase my workflow and uh, hopefully you guys will learn a couple of techniques uh, throughout the video. I am uh, going to set myself a timer of uh, two hours. So um, it usually takes me around two hours to finish a track, but after that it's like a couple more hours, maybe two or three hours to uh, uh, finish the, the little details, so fills, effects, automation, all this kind of stuff. Uh, but I'll be trying to get this done throughout this video, so by the end of the recording we'll have a fully finished track, or at least something close to a fully finished ready to play track already mastered and mixed and all this kind of stuff uh, so yeah i'm going to be turning off my camera now so you won't see my beautiful looks you only be distracted by my voice <laughs> so let's uh, begin the video Okay, so um, I want to talk a little bit about my template before uh, we begin. I have routed my drums to this drum bus with kick and a drum bus without a kick. You'll actually see me using this uh, throughout the video. I have a sidechain track. I have uh, some kicks here that I use to make my kicks or just use one of the kicks that I have already uh, taken from other tracks or made myself. Some Nexus kicks, a battery, I have uh, my baseline bus, which has a tom, a MIDI for my VST or uh, audio for uh, loops and all this stuff. I have a main hat, a main clap. I have some percussion here, which has a simpler, a percussion bus, bus which, ha which has a simpler drum rack and some audio for loops. And I have a synth bus, which has a scaler, Cthulhu, and all my external th synths, Vermona, Roland, MKS, MIDI for the VSTs, modular and audio for synth loops, effects and splice and loop cloud. So yeah, let's begin. As of right now, I have absolutely no idea what I'll be making, so it could be progressive, uh, organic, uh, or any other kind of genre. I usually write a bunch of stuff, but um, let's see... Uh, where this takes us. I'm going to be using Cthulhu to write a progression because I don't want to take too much time coming up with a chord progression and Cthulhu really helps me boost um, creativity and be super super fast. So I am going to find a cool diva preset. I actually was sent some really really cool sounds by Julian so let's see if we can find something cool. I'm gonna route this diva to the Cthulhu. And Cthulhu basically uh, allows me to play chords by just pressing one single key on my keyboard. So I'm gonna find like a pad preset. It's 
So I'm pressing only one single key on my keyboard and I'm getting these beautiful chords. So, as you can see, I already wrote something really cool and it took me literally like uh, five seconds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this Cthulhu because I also want, it, want another diva to be playing some sort of like a rhythm, so an arm or a melody. So we, we instantly have harmony and uh, melodic rhythm. So uh, let me set this Cthulhu to, you have this function here which is chords, but you also can add, add arp or the other way around, so only arp and fit it your own uh, chords so you get the ARP sequence but I'm just gonna use the chord on ARP so we can play both a harmony and a melodic rhythm so I'm gonna take this diva 2 and find like a some sort of like a, um, a blocky sound right so let's see I don't want the swing and I want the gate to be a little bit more open. Yeah, 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 I'm liking this. Let me find. Yeah, I think this is pretty cool. So let's write it down here. Yeah, I think this is pretty cool. So I want to have um, uh, the chords play this pattern. So only two chords for like the first little section of the track. So the intro and maybe the first drop and then actually evolve it. So it becomes some, something uh, a little bit uh, wider as far as harmo har harmony. So it would be something like this. Let me take this whole pattern and place it also into the Cthulhu for the ARP. So let me skip it. So the next sequence would be like this. So we can record this into their respective channels. Whoops. So this just this repeats, so I'm just gonna skip through to the next sequence. So we we already have like two sections for a track, an A B se an A section and a B section. So uh, I can just uh, remove the this arm, these tracks. Let's find like a a cooler bass preset. Sorry for
start thinking percussion now. Start with a top loop. All these loops are from Bound to Divide sample packs, and there's a pretty a lot of really cool stuff here. Low cut it, side chain it. I like this. But the ARP, I think it starts on like the wrong note. So I wanna like um, fix this, so maybe put this. Like right there is where it's, for me it should it's it should start right there instead of where it actually starts. something here so let's uh, keep on layering drums that's fine I think this is cool I just want to use this little clave hit here and uh, send it to some sort of cool effect so for my cool effects I have a bunch of send returns here I actually think this is quite nice this is like a Valhalla super massive delay. Let's keep going. More more drums. There was one right here that I really liked, so this one, but I only want to use this. Um... This pattern right here. So we'll take this little pattern right here and duplicate it. So right now the drums are sounding like this. More volume here. Uh, let's work on a clap. This is pretty snappy and has like a, a snap layer as well. Uh, I like this too, so I just uh, group my claps and start like layering them. Then I'll mess with the volumes and the effects on each individual layer, so I have a pretty thick clap. This is pretty punchy. I also want like a tonal layer, so maybe a. Uh... Oh, let's see what else we have here deep organic percussion loops. No one shots processed. Probably some cool stuff there, but I want something crazier. Like this. So now let me work on this layer individually to see how I can, I can make it fit. Like this. So now. Let me shorten this one.
And I want to mess with this because these for me are the type of layers that you can get the most out of. So maybe let's try a phaser on this individual layer. I'll throw in a shifter just to see what I can come up with. And maybe some reverb on this individual layer as well. So we have something like this. an ever-evolving clap. So in context. You have this weird head that happens every time and you're like, what is he doing for this kind of stuff? And it's just basically finding some weird, weird sounds and uh, adding some cool effects to, the, to them. So let's work on our main hat now. I want something like this. I only want this first hit. I'll actually take this last one, which is, seems to be a little bit cleaner. And I'll do the same process. I'll group this and start finding other hat layers so I can make like a pretty big hi-hat. Hi this is pretty cool. Maybe add a shaker too, but a shaker one shot. Actually, that's pretty cool as well, but we already have some. Let me take this one. And maybe, uh, let's see. This one's pretty noisy. And an open one. Let's see what we have. The only one I'm not liking is this one because it has that. But we can actually take this loop and put it here in the drums. So we have the whole pattern. So I really like this loop as well. So all the drums together. Let me remove this one that I just took away. This is our main drum groove, which to me, my main drums are the hi-hat and the clap. And I think the only thing we're missing to make this a full drum groove is a, like a bongo conga loop. I like the flam here. So that, I'll, I'll only take that out of, out of this loop. Yup, yup, yup. Duplicate this one, let's find another one. I actually wanna check the Raw ones. This is pretty cool. I'll process it my own way. I'll quantize it. Low cut, side chain. I'll add some overdrive. I 
I'll add a little bit of reverb on my send. Maybe some delay. Same for this. I'll take and put this on a different algorithm, so Complex or Complex Pro maybe. I'll pitch it down. I'll add the same overdrive right here because I want them to feel like they're in the same space. I'll take in another, uh, maybe conga loop. Only taking those two hits. So my bongos will sound like this. Let me quantize. And I only want to use um, this hit. So this one, I'll mute the rest. And this one, and I'll maybe this one too. Let's see how it sounds like this. Pa pa pa. Pretty neat. I think uh, this one right here we might not actually use the flam. Maybe ban it. I like this one, but I think I only want to use this frequency range. Let's uh, think about a bass line. So let's uh, throw in another Diva. And I, I promised um, Julian I was only going to be using Diva. Uh, but I really, really love using my external synths. So eventually I think we might uh, end up writing the main lead or something with the Moog or uh, my Virus or the Prophet. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Let's find a, a bass preset. This is pretty cool, but maybe I don't want that that pitch hit, which is coming from this envelope, to route it into this um, uh, tune, uh, os tune not, not an oscillator, but the tune uh, knob. So maybe I just want it like this. And let's see what the chords are playing. So it's an E minor into a B. So E. come with a cool pattern and remember the bass doesn't have to be always playing the root note you have so much other other uh, I actually change this over here so I need to pitch this right here Uh, 
Actually, let's follow that um, low note that the harp is playing. So it's... Yep. And like I told you, we don't act we don't actually have to just use the root note. So we know it's playing an E minor chord. So we can go ahead and add like a, a minor third to add to spice the sequence up, the bass sequence, because the bass could also be playing a melody. So this is playing a major so. At the minor third, and maybe on this one it goes up to the seventh. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And same for this. Uh, something like this, right? Uh, which will then uh, replicate for this chord, which is a G. And then do the same for the other notes. So like this and this, and then this pattern I duplicate. So first pattern. And then when the G comes up, Yes, yes. And there's a, like a little bit of a messy low end thing, so I'm gonna just. And I wanna add a little bit of decay to this. I want to duplicate this and add a mid layer. So we'll find another preset or we can just distort and mess around with this same one, but I'd actually want to find like another tone. This one is pretty cool. And I want to add like a phaser and I really like this air phaser one. I love phasers by the way. Instant movement. Let me add some reverb. Maybe some delay too. But I want to add the delay as an insert here. Let's go for the echo. So I want an eighth note and this is playing a, my delay send is playing a dotted eighth note. Yeah, this is pretty cool.
So let me double check this. B E B B E B. Okay, the pattern changes over here. We place a G, and then back to B major. I'm pretty sure that's it. Actually, that last one is not a B. Whoops. Goes into the G, but then into a B minor. So this one, we need to put this in the third, minor third, not the major third. So same for this one. like a pretty cool groove that's only missing um, a main melody so this is the hardest part and we'll um, we'll just jam around to see what we can come up with and I think I'm gonna use my moat synth I'm gonna turn it on patches over here oh I need to switch this up back again so subsequent to be a hard melody to write because the basically the chord progression is a little bit um, uh, modulating between scales so let's uh, actually think about a more simple pattern instead of a more complex one because well it gets uh, it gets messy my boys and I'm not gonna lie this is where this is the hardest part <laughs> and since melodies are more uh, human generated kind of thing like well, there, there's some pretty cool plugins that can give you some really good results as far as melody generating. But I believe this is the part where you need to add your, your sauce, your personal touch. And uh, let's see what we can do. Dun, 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 dun.
Yeah, I'm guessing something like this, you know, as a placeholder, or maybe uh, later we can develop it a little bit more. But so far, I'm uh, pretty okay with this. Let's uh, throw in another diva as a layer for this main sound. I want a paddish layer kind of thing that adds like a lot of uh, stereo, I guess. <laughs> And I want it to play mono, I don't want the notes to overlap. This goes up. Yeah, kind of cool like that. Maybe another one uh, for um, a different tone. And I want my MOOC uh, melody to decay a little bit more, so... Maybe this one to be a weirder uh, layer. This is a reverb, but it has like a slapback kind of thing, so it acts like a reverb slash delay on my sense. And I actually want to take the actual plate from this one or lower it. And at this point, I think we already have enough to arrange the track. So let me add some like, um, let's see what we can find here. Maybe some, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think this might be missing like a shaker loop. So let's see what we can find here. One of this. And let's add another one that's a little bit higher like this one. So we get this. Maybe this one instead, which is like a little bit stereo. So we have a more mono shaker, which is this one. 
And I actually want to mono it a little bit more with utility. And a wider one. And they seem to pretty much be on the same groove, but I want to put both of these on Complex Pro. And sidechain both them to the kick. And actually maybe even mono this one a little bit because it might be a little a tad too wide for me. Yes, yes, I'm liking where this is going. Let me add some uh, fills to this real quick. Uh, let me put this in the effects section, like every end of the bar. Let me add, uh, maybe if we can find a crash. I guess in FX uh, followers. Sweeps. Exactly like this. Sweet. I actually want this to feel more like a crash instead of a falling noise, so I'm gonna pitch it up 12 semitones. Like this. And uh, let's uh, synth flourishes. Oh, this is pretty sweet. Let's add one of this to like the end of the bar. So uh, the end of the bar chord is playing a B minor chord and this is playing an E minor sequence. So we can pitch it up to the B chord or pitch it down. So let's, uh, if it's playing E minor, it should go up. Uh, so one to F, F sharp, G, D sharp, A, A sharp, B. So we get that like little last uh, sequence there. And it adds like this sequence that you can, you know, and let's think about another one for the middle section transition, right? Maybe this one, which is in like the same mood at least. And this uh, chord, I believe it's playing a major chord. Yeah, so it's a B major chord, this one. So we would actually need to find the... Um, the relative major of this E minor, which I don't really remember out of the top of my head, so I'm gonna use my phone real quick to find the relative major of E minor. Major E minor. Its relative major is G minor, G major, I'm sorry. So we need to pitch this into a B major, so it will be G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Mm -hmm. 
and it has like a, um, I might be wrong here, but it has like a weird note in there that I like. And next up, I want to add uh, ooh, uh, some drones, maybe. So we have, uh, if we go by scale, we have an E minor here. So let's use this one, which is pretty cool. So we can go E minor. It's playing A, so let's pitch it up to E. A sharp B, C, C sharp D, D sharp E. Then it has to... So this chord is a B major, right? So the relative major of A minor is C. So we just have to go from C, just one down. I'm pretty sure it's a C, I'm pretty sure this is a B minor. B major, right? Let's actually throw this drone, which is a major drone. So it's A sharp. Just one up. Then this chord is a major chord, which is a G, so we have to go down to A, G sharp, G. And then a major, see this is a B, mi B minor, this chord right here, so Let's just take in a B minor drone. And we have a whole texture behind that's following the chord progression. Pretty sweet. I want to remove those pops a little bit, so let me pitch it up one octave. Let me remove the pops here. Let me mess around with this uh, uh, atmosphere thing because, uh, like I told you before, atmosphere stuff is the stuff that you can mess around with the most. So let me throw in a faster tan, maybe. A phaser as well. Let me add some uh, delay, maybe a green delay, some actual real delay, and some reverb. And I want to LFO this green delay to make like a sweeping texture.
Actually, let's LFO a bunch of parameters here. Let's LFO the spray, the frequency. Let's LFO the feedback. Let's LFO this time thing and well, let's set them up so they don't move so crazy. So maybe the spray goes from 30% to 49. The frequency just LFOs a little, little bit from, let's say this thing right here. The feedback stays pretty high. And the time also doesn't move so much because then it will be some crazy um, Let's EQ it. So we have this texture in the background. Let me add some more uh, delay. We're pretty much at an, uh, an hour now, and I believe we already have a, a cool A B section, and we can move uh, in between this uh, all this uh, content that we have right now. So uh, let's uh, duplicate this to make it, let's say, I guess eight minutes long or something. Let's see how much we have right now. We have four minutes, so I guess we'll just double this. And that's an eight minute check. So let's think about uh, uh, arrangement now. So we'll start with the pretty much just the atmospheres and I'll bring in these scenes later on. No crashes. Maybe we keep the fill every bar. I mean, every eight bars, I think it is. So no ways. We need a kick. I have my a bunch of my own kicks here, but I wanna um, I wanna use one of the ones supplied by Julian, which there's a lot of good ones here. This one's pretty cool, so let me pop it in here. And I want to keep this sequence going uh, so no bass, uh, I mean no harmony changes for a little bit and we'll fix this uh, also to go like this, let's say for two minutes, yep that's enough, so melody doesn't pop up yet and we'll filter this in the intro. I like my intros to have a little bit of harmony, just subtle. So the pad would come also filtered. Also the sequence needs to be filtered. I want a mini break here. Has to go away. The arc opens up. The bat opens up as well. Oh, that's the... <laughs> that was the... Compressor side chain.
I believe I wanna close this a little bit. Make it a little bit more stereo with the chorus. And I actually wanna tease this in this mini drop here. Actually, let's pop this layer over here. Let's bring in the crash, which I deleted the MIDI for. I don't know why, but let's bring in the crash here. And let's add some sort of riser as well. A short one. This one's pretty sweet. 122. And um, I'm guessing um, this last chord is a uh, B chord. So let's pitch it to a B. And let's work on the drums, so maybe... This shaker only comes right in the very... gets teased right before it pops up fully and I would need to record this but uh, actually let's uh, now we'll record it later let's just use the um, Ableton filter for the time being I actually want to add a, make this kick a little clickier, so I'll use battery for this, uh, for just to add a top kick, which is uh, easily done in battery. So I have a bunch of kicks here. Uh, if I play them now, hold on, I need to, it sounds like this, but I'll just use battery's own filter to remove this and I'll, I'll browse through kicks until I find like a cool top. This one's cool, let me add another one, just, you know, because we can. <laughs> this one's pretty cool, let me lower the volume. So the arc will open up here and actually absolutely close here.
after a couple of bars, we'll go into a big breakdown of, say, one minute. Let's bring in this second layer here. flourishes to be a little bit higher or maybe a little bit more stereo so let's add some delay with a lot of feedback and for the final big drop I actually want it to be a little bit more um, uh, let me cut the pad off here. We'll mess with the art sequence a little bit more later. I mean, as far as automation goes, uh, maybe this pad also opens up here, but closes in the drop. I mean, in the breakdown. Bring in a riser, a long riser for the final. So I like this one, but I want it to be more. Um, um, uh, rhythmic so we can add uh, an auto pan full amount no phase 16th notes saw wave A little bit of reverb, maybe something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need the. I need some white noise, so I'm gonna make white noise with operator. And a thing I do a lot is uh, instead of using just regular white noise sweep up, I'll take um, the melody rhythm. and make my white noise rise it out of the rhythm of the melody. So I like that. And uh, sometimes, or well, a lot of times, I also use white noise as a last layer to add more energy to the lead. And I like to use Tans Bar uh, samples for this, which they have these electric, really electric hi hats. That I use as a layer on the melody. So the whole melody bus, let's actually group it. So main melody. Uh, actually, I have to. Uh, 
pitch this entire sequence to the middle C and I'm sorry for this but uh, it's part of the job I'm pretty sure there's a simpler way to do this but I'm guessing I'm guessing the whole rhythm stays the same and if not then we have uh, another rhythmic thing going on so I'll put some random panning so the, the white noise moves a lot some delay and some reverb layer for the final section of the drop so this would this would only pop up in the last drop and I want maybe something more middle-ish distorted kind of sounding something like this which adds like the middle frequencies with this pad is also playing but it seems like it's a lot wider Feeling like the low end is not crunchy enough, and I'm thinking it might be the kick. So I'm actually going to show you a little trick I use to sample kicks from other tracks. I have this um, rack I built that I use to sample kicks, and I'm gonna sample a kick that I really really like from uh, Morning Elegance. I love these guys. And I actually know these guys personally, so I could ask them ask them for the kick. But, but since most of you guys don't have this um, benefit, I'll, uh, I'll just sample it for the sake of showing you guys uh, how I would do it. So I'll just find like a pretty um, clean kick sample. So usually the intro or the outro have the cleanest samples. And I'll just take this and uh, I'll um, crop it. I'll copy and paste this simpler into every single simpler of this rack. And basically the rack is um, a multiband imager from Ozone split into four, four frequencies. So the first frequency is the top end. Second frequency is the, just the top body and sub and it sounds like this all together which is basically just a kick and to make it cleaner because you can hear it has a little bit of that shaker and, and some bongo i'll just shorten the sample without losing much of the information Sub can stay as long as it wants because it's just the very, very low frequencies of the sub. So now we have a pretty cool kick we can use. Both of them sound pretty cool, but let's see how this one interacts with the sub.
I'll group the pets. Pan them a little bit. And um, let's see. I actually want this arc to pan a little bit more as well. So I set the pan modulation to be random, so it would be throwing uh, random voltages or random values into this knob. This is the attenuation knob. And uh, if I turn it all the way up, then it's going to be extra crazy, but I don't want it to be so, so crazy. I actually like how it sounds a lot better right here. Let's add some uh, keyboard um, tracking so the highest notes open the filter a little bit more while the lowest notes stay a little bit closer so we have even more movement let's add a riser here to help the transition into the uh, less energetic side of the final drop And I want to help this uh, sweep down crash thing with an actual crash. So let's see if we have something. Uh, what is vocals? We'll actually add some of this into the breakdown. This is pretty sweet. So it's, it's pitched up uh, 19 semitones, so let me just put it back to where it should be. And let's actually add like a Valhalla shimmer to this with like an endless reverb. Yep. Yeah, I like that. So like I told you, let me work on some vocals here for the breakdown. And uh, there's some cool stuff here. Um, uh, vocals and phrases. So let's... Uh, e major. I keep on going back to Cthulhu, I should just remember these chords, but it's an E minor, so find some E minor vocal. Actually, this is pretty cool, we we'll just pitch it. Let's pitch it to an E, so C sharp D, D sharp E. Let's add a bunch of delay. Let's add another one. This is pretty cool. So it's four semitones up. Let's duplicate this one more time, but we actually need to change it 
for this one maybe I wanna put this one right here and maybe pitch it to the And I want to add the same delay to this uh, other flourish that we have right here below us. And I want this vocals to have uh, some sort of other weird random stuff. So I'm going to try Tantra from um, Plugin Alliance. Let's see if uh, it works. Yep. Yep, we have this cool texture here and we can actually have this texture um, during the second section of the drop. Let's have some sort of low end uh, bass line in the breakdown that would just be playing the root notes. Legato it. And no echo, no phaser, and just a pretty simple patch. I don't want envelope. Actually, the chorus is pretty cool. Let's add like a Tom Groove um, to the intro. So the intro also has a little bit of low end. So uh, the bass, actually let's take the bass uh, pattern. But we'll simplify it. like this and yeah like this with some delay so we will only play when the bass is not playing so in the outro, we'll remove the bass, and this comes in, so... So we're at one hour and a half already, and I think uh, the track is pretty much done. I wanna maybe try and write another main melody, because, well, this is good enough, but it's not good enough for me and maybe add some more melodies on the break and we still need some more like um, melodies to help the track keep on building so we don't want the, the main melodies to start here and then play all throughout the track or maybe when the when this melody goes out like the main melody 
and it filters out. We add another melody right here. So yeah, let's keep on working on it. Let's hear it back. Let's hear it back from the, um, a little bit of the uh, first drop into the breakdown. And I wanna add another crash here or effect kind of thing here. So a uh, faller, I guess. Like this one is pretty cool. And it's got the rhythm. I like everything to have a little bit of a rhythm and not being so like legato. So let's pitch this down to um, uh, an E, I guess. So just one down. Let's add a little bit of this riser here to help this transition. We'll keep the main hat going into the break and we'll uh, filter the percussion uh, utility to like um, put it down a couple dBs during the break a couple dBs and then I, I go 8 dBs <laughs> mm -hmm. same for the hats but I want the hats to die a lot more so I'll use a different utility so they pretty much gold band. Actually, let's see how the clap sounds. Yeah, this is a lot better, so. sidechain automation to this riser and low cut it and I want to also add um, a lot of echo so it also fades into the drops and into the breakdowns or whatever it's doing so a lot of echo just uh, let's go stereo let's uh, open this up actually let's use delay because it's a lot simpler and I don't want to waste a lot of time I want to use four notes so uh, one over four, I guess, I think it is, yeah. But I wanna add some time modulation and some filter and some rate. So it sounds like this now. And the tail moves a lot. So, you know, maybe ping pong as well. So you have this tail of flourishing, uh, moving uh, random, uh, decaying kind of thing. Maybe I want to bring in the base layer a couple uh, bars later. So it drops into a pretty dry thing.
I think we can record the Moog. Um, so I can add more energy using the filter on the Moog instead of the filter on the actual Ableton. Because, well, if you're buying an external synth, you have to use the filters because that's what basically makes the sound. Uh, a Moog has these uh, Moog filters that they're, uh, that's their character. The Prophet 6 has these, uh, I'm guessing, Oxford filters or whatever that adds the, character, adds the character to the actual oscillators. So yeah, we'll work on the uh, Moog uh, lead. Moog, Moog. I don't know how to actually uh, pronounce it, but yeah. Let's go from this section all the way into the drop and it will be like a three minute recording. So let's dive right into it. with this so let me duplicate this here and here and we like and actually duplicate this one over here let's remove this so when the bit when the final drop uh, finishes we'll remove the actually let's take it away over here 
and let's remove this layer over here and like a missing section in the thumb sequence for some reason. I don't want the attack. So um, we're almost there and last thing I want to try is um take the side chain here and place it here I want to add some uh, compression to this lead I'll use um, the distressor from UAD It's already adding that pluckiness that I want. So with, without, this adds a little bit of attack. I might want to add a little bit of decapitator here as well, just a tad, tad bit. I did some weird shit here with the filters, but um, uh, I guess it's fine. I actually don't like that note specifically, so let me find the... Uh, this one's clear, I'll just take this. That's ass. Let me take this and remove. Uh, 
Yep, yep, yep. I want this Moog lead to also pan a little bit, so I don't want it completely lightly mono. So last thing I want to try is maybe uh, I'll bring in uh, another lead uh, from let's say the the prophet I guess uh, we'll see we'll see let's try the prophet actually let's uh, let's do diva just for the sake of it. Trying to keep it um, as much as I can in the box. So we'll just um, add like a harmony thing here with, uh, I wanna use like a stringy or a long decaying lead. This is perfect. So let's uh, take the pat midi. And this is a neat trick in Ableton. You take, a, I'll recolor this to green so we can identify and I can focus on the green diva. And I can use the pad to uh, write top lead to harmonize it. And then
Next thing I want to try is um, harmonize the lead with thirds or fifths or sevenths. So let me take uh, the MIDI from the actual lead and I'll, uh, I'll legato it. Wait, I fucked up. Actually, let's just keep going as, as we were going. I don't want to take so much time in this, but um, ah, uh, oh, fucking man, let's. Almost done. I think that's it. Legato then. And uh, let's find a chunkier sound.
This one. And actually no ARP opening here because it's getting too cluttered. Actually the ARP should close a little bit more here. I'll have it open for the last final drop. So I'm guessing this should come here after the... And I actually want it to be like wider and not so... Exactly like this. Maybe it opens up in the final build up. Uh, frequency. Actually, let's add it throughout the whole drop, but um, super closed here. It starts showing up. And I might want to add like a little right to the final, final drop, just to add a little bit more energy. Uh, so let's find, I think there's some right loops, tambourine. Uh, this could be useful, but uh, we'll skip it for this track, I guess. Uh, where it's bound to divide, drum pack. I believe there's some right loops over here, symbols. Oh, there's some crashes here. Let's uh, add some crashes here as well. So this was like our crash. Let's add a real crash. So we, we, had, we get a whole super uh, chunky crash sound. Let's find a weirder one. This one is cool. Uh, where were we? We were in the ride, so let's find that ride. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's this, but there's right loops somewhere. And I wanna use loops. <laughs> I don't wanna ride this. I think this is perfect. Let's add it to the last section of the build up. So here. Uh, maybe I'm going to write it because I want it to be a lot longer like tss, tss, tss. Like this one. I 
I want to side chain it. I want to add some reverb and I want to add some delay maybe. Let's try a resonator just, you know, why not? Let's find our reverb right here. I don't know how to use this, so... Need to raise the volume after the resonator. So this entire section I think could be a little bit uh, better, so more melodies, uh, not just the R, maybe some changes in the main melody or, an, or a whole nother melody, but I don't think I'll be able to uh, actually wrap it up. So I'm just going to uh, master this track and I'll do some drum bass processing. So let's uh, dive into that because I'm closing in on two hours and I want to finish this track so it ends up sounding like a completely finished project. So I have my own Dulu's uh, drum processing right here. And um, I'm going to place it uh, in the drum bus. So this one is rarely ever used. So these are the this is the chain I use most of the time. I'm going to put the clipper in the end and then we'll begin processing it. So a little bit of compression, maybe like 2 to 3 dB compression. Some decapitator to add saturation to the whole bus. Some Saturn with this audio tent uh, preset. But to be honest, you can get away with this this uh, best stuff, best basic satura saturation, and you can see it adds like a bunch of high end. Then I'll use soup to catch a little of this of this resonance, and I'll use the clipper to catch the very loudest peaks, which usually is the clap. So let's go over here and uh, check if whatever we did is actually useful. So the drum bus is speaking at minus one dB, so minus two dB, right? And with the drum bus on, 
it's a lot clearer, uh, more uh, high endy, and it's even peaking lower. So we actually gained a couple of dBs there. And then I'll go into the full, so the signal chain goes like this. This, both of these drum buses go into this drum bus, no kick, and K means no kick to me. And then I have a drum bus with kick, which this drum bus gets sent to this drum bus. So imagine this is this is like the like that meme where the guy is like poof brain blown like <laughs> like crazy math. <laughs> uh, so I'll add my Dulus uh, pre here. So it's a Neve preamp. Um, which comes from the UED thing and right now it should it's probably going to distort because this knob is pushed all the way to the limit and I'll just pull it back until it's um, one so uh, I guess it, this this meter goes by 10 dB each one so it, it will be 10 dB before distortion so right now pretty cool huh <laughs> nah man not cool so we'll just go two three down so right here is distorting, so I'll just go one down and I'll gain match it with this utility. You can gain match with this, but uh, for some reason I have the utility here and I think it's a little bit cooler. So we'll check the whole bus without the preamp. It's basically picking at zero dB. And with the preamp, it sounds a little bit more glued together and it's picking lower. So I actually gain even more dBs there. So I can actually raise it a little bit more. So that's basically how I process my drums uh, almost every single time. And finally, we'll add my Dulus Master Chain. So it's Dulus M Chain right here. And I will probably recommend you guys to lower your volume a little bit because this is going to get a little bit louder. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I basically leave my settings as they are. So my multiband, uh, an ozone exciter for the low end, a little bit of the high end and some sooth. And it's basically always like this. I also have an Oxford inflator from, uh, I don't remember the company, but I need to get the UED one. And I'll usually limit it to get like minus four, minus five dB of gain reduction. So I'll go to the drop. And I'll actually lower the entire uh, mix. So the... Um, the Actually, let's not lower the entire mix. Let's leave it as it was, and I'll actually place a utility uh, right here, so the master chain gets fed, because I, I already like how the mix is sounding, oh, the balance. I just want the uh, limiter to not be stressing so much. And I'm sorry for the clicks and pops, but we'll just hear uh, the track from... Uh, I'll just uh, record the track, like I'll, I like to record my track inside my Ableton project to see... Um, uh, to catch a glimpse of the waveform and see if it's healthy or not. Let me check these divas, if they're multi-core, yeah, they're multi-core. This one too. Multicore basically splits the processing into all the cores of your CPU. So if you have a multicore CPU, enabling multicore will actually help you uh, relieve the stress on the CPU. And I could bounce um, some of this so we can record them, uh, record the track properly. But I'll just, uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll upload the track as well, uh, so you can take a listen after the. 
after you watch the whole video. So let's just play it from this section until the drop and until this final part of the drop. I'll record this. If it's clicking and popping, we'll just hear it back again uh, once I turn off a lot of the master chain processing. So let's play. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, basically how I will build the track, guys. Uh, it still needs a little bit more work uh, regarding maybe some of the transitions, automations. Uh, I guess some a little bit more melody stuff here and there. I will work on this uh, third uh, kind of layer. Uh, not third layer, but the harmonizing lead layer to not just play thirds and fourths and I guess some fifths here and there, but also move around a little bit more to make the melody more euphoric because this can rise and rise um, and it helps it also helps the arrangement in a sense what else I would do uh, yeah I guess more melodies here in this section specifically uh, more on the intro I guess but yeah that's that would be basically how I would build the track and um, uh, this uh, project and this thing could do a little bit more work like I said but yeah it's uh, I guess it ended up sounding pretty cool for uh, two hours and a little a little something something so uh, I hope you enjoyed guys and, and I hope you learned a few tricks I want to say that I also have a patreon uh, where I do tracks from scratch exactly like this I walk through a lot of my projects and uh, I do sample packs, I, I have a modular rig that I'm doing some sample packs for that. I share a lot of the project files that I finish. I, I'm building some uh, Ableton racks uh, that have the Moog sound, the Prophet sound. So you can actually get this, that sound without um, spending 3K on a synth. 
which nowadays is not necessary because, well, Diva sounds exactly like the MOOC or exactly like the Prophet. It's just that I already bought them and I feel the need to use them, even though I could make the same thing with uh, uh, an internal VST. I want to say thanks to uh, Julian, Bound to Divide, and uh, his team for having me. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I'll see you later, guys.